Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Chief Chat. I'm Julie Mitchell, filling in for the Exchange's Senior Enlisted Advisor, Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I am here with my friend and co-host, Leah Matthews. How's it going, Leah? Hi. I'm good. How are Hi. you, Julie? Oh, I'm so good. And this is a huge week for us. It is. It is. What it is. It? It's our meeting the understand? game week. The exchange, yes, it is. And the exchange is a presenting partner, or a yeah, participating partner of the Army Navy game. And we are really looking forward to going out to East Rutherford, New Jersey. We're heading up there tomorrow to get ready for all the festivities. And we're just excited to be part of the game this year. Absolutely. I it's our fourth year and in honor of the game we have a terrific guest with us today we're so excited to have him today's guest was a two-time captain with the army black knights finishing his collegiate career with 275 tackles and he's currently a linebacker for the los angeles chargers and he is fired up for this weekend's army navy matchup as well please help me welcome cole christensen to chief chat thank you thank you Hi, ladies. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yes, thank you, Cole. It's it's great to meet you again. Um, it's a pleasure to have you join us. Can you share with the viewers where you're coming to us from today? I'm in Irvine, California, in my house with uh, two of my teammates who live with me. Um, we're about 20 minutes from Costa Mesa, where we practice every day, and like 55 minutes from SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, where we play every Sunday. So just hanging out, enjoying our off day this Tuesday. Excellent. Thank you for spending some of your day off with us. We appreciate it very much. Really liking your Army flag in the background. I think that's quite appropriate for the interview and for everything coming up this week. Yeah, I had to, I had to support the colors for this interview. I think I'll probably wear it on my back all week, honestly, when I'm walking around the building. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And Cole, you had a storied high school football career in Virginia. So what led you to go to West Point to play? Yeah, so, you know, the odd thing is I never really thought that I'd be in the military when I was really young. Um, but I got offered to play football at West Point uh, my junior year in high school. And I ended up visiting three times and just talking to everyone, all the old grads, all the current players. And I just fell in love with it, and I knew I'd regret it forever if I if I didn't go there. Uh, and it ended up being the the best decision I've ever made, and probably ever will make. And I'm just so proud of my time that I had there, and all the relationships I got to make. And excited to go serve once uh, once that time comes after the NFL. Excellent. And then uh, we understand that your mom wasn't crazy about you going to a service academy. So can you tell us a little about that? She was nervous for sure. And I, I was I was nervous too, not so much about, uh, you know, being in the service, but really just what the life was going to be like. Is it something that I'm really going to enjoy doing? Um, it ended up being the most fun four years I could ever had. It was such a good time. But my mom was definitely really, really nervous at first. She didn't quite know what to expect for me and what it was going to be like for her as a parent being away from me for so long, because you really don't get to come home that often. Um, so she actually ended up making a question list with, I think, like 110 questions or something ridiculous and gave it to our defensive coordinator and said, I'd really like to have these questions answered before I make my decision. Um, and he was a trooper and he got all the questions answered that he could. He sent it down to the athletic director and different teachers and said, hey, can you answer these questions for this this crazy mom from Virginia? And uh, ended up being uh, really <laughs> doing a good job and helped, definitely helped my mom, but also helped me. Okay, that's fantastic. Lee and I are both moms um, of 18 year olds who are going to start on different phases of life. I love that. So, or to hit to his, whoever, wherever he's going. I'm going to take a page from your mom's oh, book. <laughs> you cut out there for a little bit. I'm going to miss like the last 30 seconds. Oh, it's all good. I was just saying, I'm going to take a page from your mom's book. I think that's a great idea. Just asking uh -huh. questions like that. That's, I love that. <laughs> so yeah. there is just something, <laughs> there's something so special about the Army Navy game. 
the only college game that will be on TV on Saturday. And But beyond that, can you just tell us what makes that game so special and what the atmosphere is like on the field? Honestly, I think it's just how many people it touches. Like like you said, it's the only game that's on that Saturday, so everyone's tuning in. But you can just feel how many people it impacts, like the three or four weeks leading up to the game. Like when I was a cadet, uh, I was getting – you know, emails and letters from generals and colonels in Afghanistan across the globe saying, hey, I want you to know how much this game means to me and everyone else that wears this uniform and, uh, you know, how proud they are of us. And it just really makes you feel like, wow, this this game is so much bigger than a football game because it brings everyone together. And it's obviously we're button heads, Army versus Navy, like we're we're going to war with them on that day. But you can feel that it brings us as a military closer uh, because we're sharing this time together, and then when it's over, we all go celebrate together and hang out. So it's a it's a really really cool really cool deal. Obviously, the festivities leading up to the game are incredible. That was probably my favorite part of it was like all the spirit missions that we do, uh, messing with them like two weeks before the game, like hanging the banners outside our windows and just taking jabs at them anytime we could, trying to steal the mascot, like all that all that stuff is so fun. <laughs> Did you steal the right mascot? Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, or the screens that we went back and got the real one. So I think we made up for our mistake the first time. <laughs> I heard there was some um, some question about that, and and they weren't really stealing it, right? They were just borrowing him for just a little while. Him. Just borrowing. Take some good pictures. <laughs> probably need it for. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about rivalry, right? This is um, probably the most storied rivalry in football, Army versus Navy. So you must have one or two favorite memories. Um, is there anything that stands out in particular to you? I guess actual game moments. Um, my favorite of all time will be the snow game my sophomore year um, mm -hmm. when he missed that that field goal and we won the game and everyone's still in the field and just wearing those those uniforms with the snow falling and you know we had a, a skiing panda bear on the side of the helmet and on our cleats and it was just perfect that it would snow that day I, I felt like it was destiny that we were supposed to win um that was really really special obviously beating them the first time to end the streak was was nuts uh i, I think the hardest hit i took that game was a 70 plus year old man that had come on the field after we won and hit me and took me to the ground and he had tears coming in his eyes just bawling his eyes out saying you don't know how much this means to me and everyone else. Like we've been waiting 14 years for this to happen, and uh, and then going out in the city that after after we had won, just meeting all these old grads that had flown in from all across the world, just how happy they were. So those memories are are incredible, but they're all special. I mean, even my senior year when we lost, um, it hurt terribly, but uh, an awesome experience nonetheless because you still get that camaraderie and get to just be around all the people that have come before us. And then this year's game is going to be played uh, at the Meadowlands instead of in Philadelphia. It's kind of going to be in the, the shadows of the World Trade Center in honor of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. What do you think about that? Uh, what do you think that will mean to the players that, uh, this coming week? I think it's fantastic. I think it's it's one of the best causes and units and that we've represented with our uniforms since I think this this Nike versus Under Armour era started. I think the, the uniforms are unbelievable. And I think just playing where they're playing will just add so much more emotion to the game. And it already has the most emotion that you can feel of any football game. I think if we go to the Super Bowl this year, Army Navy will still top it. But uh, I think playing there in New York, uh, especially 20 years after 9-11, I think those guys are going to be having goosebumps the entire day. So I'm excited for them. I wish I could be there. But I know they're going to enjoy it, and I know everyone else there is going to enjoy it. This is um, this is absolutely my favorite game of the entire year. I love Army Navy. It's like we spend the whole year, uh, you know, the exchange is a is a participating partner with the game and with Army West Point Sports. So we spend all season following along and sharing um, from both West Point and the Army Navy game social media and just sharing all the news. And so it's like. For us, this is the Super Bowl, you know. And um, actually, I'm gonna tell a quick story because we met uh, we met a gentleman at the airport on the way home from an Army Navy game, uh, I believe two years ago, 2019. 
And he said he'd been to professional games. He'd been to a Super Bowl. But um, every year he goes to the Army-Navy game because there's nothing, I mean, in his words, there was nothing like this game, even a Super Bowl game. So um, anyway, I just had to share that. I love this game. Can't wait for Saturday. Um, But let's talk about you and your time at West Point. So how did uh, playing for and attending West Point, how did that make you a better leader, Cole? Well, it was everything. Like I, I think I was a decent leader in high school. I, I was a captain on my team there. I only graduated with 77 kids, so it was a little smaller population that I was yeah. in front of. But, uh, you know, West Point does exactly what it's intended to do, and that's to create the leaders of the United States military. And, you know, I went there, and they broke me down pretty good my freshman year, as they're supposed to, teach you how to follow first. Um you know, really learn a lot about yourself, what you can physically and mentally take as a person and realize that you can keep going forward and times are tough. First time I've been away from home for more than two or three weeks at a time. So that was a shock to the system. I was excited for it, but it was hard. And then as you get older, they start giving you more responsibility, uh, put you in front of more people. You have to lead a squad, a platoon, a battalion. Like you just keep going up and up and uh, you just learn lessons from all the people around you. And I got a, a chance to be around the best leaders in the world. I think uh, some of my teachers, some of my, um, some of the officers that are there is, you know, ca- uh, attack leadership. And I got to s- just take pointers from them say, you know what, I really loved how they do that. Or, you know, run across someone and say, you know what, I probably won't use that in my, my arsenal of leadership tools. Um, so, th- and then when I became a captain of the football team, I think that probably, uh, affected my leadership style more than anything, just because it's, I think it's a lot tougher to lead your direct peers. Like if you're three years older than another cadet, um, they have to basically say yes, sir, or no, sir, because I'm older than them. But when you're trying to tell your best friend on the team, something like, dude, like we got to do it this way or this way. Like, let me, like, let's talk to each other. Like, give me your input. I found that it's, it's much more difficult to lead someone that you're equal with. And uh, it's, but I, I enjoy doing it, you know, honestly, way much, but much more. We had the same goals and, you know, fighting every day to, to, to win games was pretty, pretty special. So back in 2019, the Secretary of Defense signed a memo allowing athletes from the academies to pursue careers in professional sports directly after graduation. How big of a surprise was that to you? And then what did it mean to you to be among the first to be able to take advantage of that? It was pretty cool and it, it was a surprise. And I'll, I'll tell a quick story on how it happened. I don't know if this is widely known or not, yeah. but so my junior year, we went to the White House to um, get the Commander in Chief's trophy. And we're in the Oval Office taking pictures with President Trump. And I'm talking to Vice President Pence, like in the back of the room. And uh, I hope he doesn't get mad for me telling that it was him, but Elijah Riley, uh, safety for the Jets now, uh, co-captain of mine, he's taking his picture with the president and he like whispers something to him and president Trump's like, what'd you say? And, uh, he basically said, I had no idea you guys couldn't go play immediately. Uh, Eli had basically, you know, mentioned to him that, uh, it'd be awesome if we could, you know, sign something that let us go do it immediately. And Trump said, you know what? I had no idea you couldn't. So he's hit a button and his lawyer walked in and he's like, I want to sign an executive order. Let this guys go play. Like as soon as they graduate and all of us, obviously were jaws are on the floor. I can't believe this is happening. And, uh, Sure enough, you know, two months later it happens and scouts are showing up to practice and I'm already basically packed, ready to go to Hawaii to be a field artillery officer, which I will once this is over and I'm so excited to do it. But uh, they're like, actually, Los Angeles Chargers going to call and you're going to go there first. So it was a surprise. It was a very cool surprise and happy it happened. Wow, that's excellent. I'm so glad that you guys got that opportunity. And then, so your first season with the Chargers, you spent several weeks on the practice squad uh, before being elevated to act on the active roster. So how do you stay mentally focused uh, when there is no game to prepare for in those early weeks? You know, I think it's just the same approach I had at school or like even in the military, like you, you train, 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 waiting for, you know, something that may or may not happen. Uh, you know, you just got to stand ready to, to do your job when that time calls. And I approach every week like I am playing. 
uh, you know, it's no different like my film study and body rehabilitation and working out. So I, I treat every week the same because you never know when your number's going to be called, just like, you know, you do in, in the military when you're training back at home, unknowing whether or not you're going to be sent somewhere else in the world to go do your job. So right now watching, we have the military community with us viewing from all over the world. Do you have any words of hope or encouragement you'd like to share with our nation's heroes today? Well, first off, thank you for all of your service. You know, that can't be said enough. Um, and, you know, I'm just really excited to be among your ranks. I'm excited to, to really join the service once I'm done playing. Um, really excited to go to, to wherever I'm going to end up going to be a field artillery officer and be among you. And, um, you know, I'm really excited about this week. Uh, obviously, go Army and beat Navy. Uh, just excited, excited for it. Us too. And Cole, we just want to pause for a second to share some of the feedback from our Facebook live feed. Um, there's a lot of Cole Christensen fans out there. So I'm just going to pause and read some of the comments. Chuck Tannehill says, good morning from China Lake. Um, Eddie, Sil Eddie Hill says, hello, everyone. And thank you for your service. Mark Litterer says hello from West Point, um, and he'll see Julie and I later this week. Um, Chuck says go Navy, and he has a winking emoji with that. So to each their own, Chuck. Um, <laughs> Chris Ward <laughs> says thank you for your service. Um, you mentioned, I'm going to probably get this wrong, SoFi Stadium. How awesome is that place? That's a SoFi is incredible. Him. Yeah, if, if any of you have a chance to go to SoFi, it's worth it. it. It's probably the coolest state I've ever been in. It looks like a spaceship from the outside. It looks like it's about to rise up out of the ground and blast off to Mars. And then you you go in there, and it, it's it is truly remarkable. So it's if you get a chance to go, you should. So Excellent. in addition, Karen, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Julie. Karen, no, says you go that ahead. You go ahead. She'll be watching. And Barbara says, go Army. So I had to get that um, that comment in there. Chip says, hello from Washington, D.C. And he also says, go Army. So cool. Yeah, you got to balance out Chuck's just read go, a Navy go Navy comment. comment. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. <laughs> so in addition to all your Facebook fans watching, um, Leah and I actually were big fans of yours. And we met you um, a few years ago <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing, but we're okay. going to share this with you anyway. I, but probably the most memorable after the Army um, played in the Armed Forces Bowl a few years ago at TCU, yep. Leah and I, um, we wanted to get our picture taken with you. And you I were remember. so nice. And don't, well, there you go. You indulged <laughs> us and bless your heart. Your parents were watching this happen, and I'm sure they were like, Who are these old ladies like taking their picture <laughs> with a college aid son? So we were so excited. We got this selfie, and then we had a colleague who was like, What are you girls doing to him? Like, why? Like, why are you stalking him down? We're like, We just want a picture because we've been following him all season. And so we uh, we thought we would share the selfie with you today. So yeah, it, it, right. it, it we actually our memories. <laughs> We also got your autograph that night um, and because I was like pretty certain that you were going to go pro. And so I was like, we should ask him for his autograph because he's, he has a career in football. <laughs> that is so cool. I do remember. And you guys, gotta, you guys got to send me that picture. I don't even know if my mom has it or anyone, but I want it. That's a cool picture. Oh, we will make sure you get a copy of it and um, feel free to frame it or, or do whatever you want to with it. So yeah, we, do. we don't mind. <laughs> no way, don't go that far. <laughs> Whenever it pops up on our Facebook memories, we're like, oh, remember that day? Like it was just, it was fun. I don't know. So good times. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's so cool. So Chief Osby is normally the host of our show. He, like we mentioned, was unable to join us today, but he did have a question that he wanted us to ask you. Um, he wanted to know who has been some of the biggest influences in your life, both on and off the field. Whew, that's a great question. Um, probably more than I can even list today, but uh, obviously my dad um, from the beginning, I, I don't think anyone's impacted me more than him just from the direction I've taken in life and mindset and how to be a good person. And then, you know, coaches I've had over the years, uh, 
my high school coach, uh, college coach, defensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, really, really impacted me. Uh, he coaches at UNC now. Uh, and then just uh, the leaders I met at West Point, you know, uh, Major Blackburn, I, I don't know if he's going to watch this. I don't even know if he's still a major at this point. He might be higher than that. Um, but he's he's the best leader I've been around in the military. Uh, and he really, really shaped me into the leader I am now. I really took a lot of things I saw in him and try to use it in my own leadership style and just how to be a, a good person. He's just a fantastic guy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a ton I could go on forever, but, uh, really fortunate to be around a lot of great people in my life. I love it when people say that, that their parents, that that's who they, you know, look up to and influence them as, as a mom. Like I could only hope that my son would answer that way. So I'm sure your dad is proud yeah. of you and appreciates that. Of course, my mom. I can't leave my mom out. Like that's self. That's terrible. <laughs> I didn't see my mom, but um, no. Oh, no, 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 I didn't feel like that. <laughs> Both of my parents, absolutely. Uh, they they were fantastic. They they truly gave us the best childhood we could have ever had. Uh, me and my two sisters uh, had an awesome life growing up, and they gave us every single thing they could. <laughs> so glad to hear that. And then Cole, so what are your plans once football, your football career is over? You mentioned earlier your your uh, field ar artillery career with the military. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about your plans after football? Yep. So as soon as football ends, I'll recommission as a second lieutenant and uh, five years minimum. I anticipate staying in longer. You know, I guess you never really know until you're in it. Uh, but just really, really excited to do that job. I fell in love with it when I was a sophomore at West Point and we went and shot the guns for the first time. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So I'm going to go do that. I don't know if my Hawaii slot will still be there by the time I get out of the NFL. I hope it will. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, I'll go wherever they want me to go and, and do my job. And then beyond that, sounds I have like no a, idea. That sounds like a terrible assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm pretty pumped about it. So Cole, before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers where they can go to kind of keep up with you and the Chargers online and then kind of learn about what's ahead for you? Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously, if you've follow the charters on Twitter, Instagram, or just go on their website online. Uh, you can find stuff about me there. Obviously the link at the bottom. Um, and then my Instagram, um, if you find, if you just look up Cole Christensen on Instagram, I'll probably be the first one to pop up you can follow me there. Uh, I don't really have a ton of other social media, but you know, I try to be as active as I can and uh, just excited to finish this year out and hopefully make a playoff run. And that's what I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks, rooting on, the Black Knights this weekend. Hopefully they can beat the hell out of Navy. So speaking of, we can't let you go without hearing your prediction for this weekend's game. Um, will the Black Knights, will they make it two in a row? Um, any Gosh. score prediction? Uh, a lot to a little. I really think it, we might blow them out this <laughs> year. I, I, I believe that we will. Like, I, don't, I don't even think we it'll be close. Keenan we had Keenan Reynolds on um, yesterday. He was uh, he had played for Navy. He thinks that yep. Navy's going to win twenty four thirteen. So he gave us an actual score prediction twenty four thirteen Navy. What do you think? <laughs> no, he's way off. That's just outrageous. I mean, I, don't, I know he's lying and says that. Like, there's no way he like truly believes that in part. I'm going to go. I'm going to go twenty seven ten Army and. The 10 points are probably going to come because we're going to put our backups in in the fourth quarter and then they're going to score four points. That's what's going to happen. I I honestly, when he said 24-13, I thought there's no way that Army's defense is going to let them put up 24 points. There's no way. No chance. Keenan's crazy thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Keenan. We still love you, though. <laughs> Sorry, Keenan. Sorry for calling you out, but I'm going to have to go with Cole here. I think he's probably... Uh, probably a little more of an accurate prediction. <laughs> so for our viewers, you guys can catch this episode again on YouTube and Spotify. And you can also catch all of our, go back and rewatch all of our episodes, including the one with Keenan. And you can rewatch this one with Cole. And it has been such an honor having you with us today. You know, thank you for spending time with us. It just means a lot to the military community. Uh, we wish you all the best in your football and military career. And before you go, can we get a go Army beat Navy? 
Yeah, thank you guys. This has been such a blast. You guys are awesome. And it's good to see you again since uh, whenever in Texas that one time. Uh, but yeah, go Army, beat Navy. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, everybody. And from Leah and I, Chief Chat out. Thank <laughs> you.